tour style, Brad and Dennis. walking on 
had a kind of a thin crust, it's like walking on thin ice, and then when he fell, broke through that, it kind of leave a foot-sized hole, and, you, and you'd sink up your ankles in the soft sand underneath. And so we're kind of crunching along, but we were walking along because here was a jumping cactus over there. And then there was some more off in the distance, but this one was only about 100 feet away, and it was the biggest jumping cactus I'd ever seen. Most times you see them in there, you know, like this, or you know, like said, the 20 or 30 year old ones would be like this, like this. This thing, I don't know if it fit inside this room. It was that big. It was huge. And just spines and stuff. And we finally worked our way over there and underneath they had all these little pots. But it was about a foot thick. Get all these pots in there. And, and they're just pots all over this sink. It's, well, in the desert, there's not that many animals. They were big enough to just brush them off, to, to take them different places. So I, my brother, Gary, he's my older brother, and he went up there and goes, wow, look at all those things. So we kind of looking around, we picked up some of the, the crusty, broken sand, kind of like a sandstone that we broke and loose. And throw it up there and hit like this. And, you know, three or four would come down and start trying to knock some off and watch them fall down. See, we were trying to see who could knock the most off. That's kind of what we were doing. And, uh, but in most time, he did this crumbly sandstone. But I looked around and I found a rock, almost this size. And I go, oh, wow. Well, it, this, the bank was really steep. And so we were at the bottom, we were throwing stuff up there. And I go, well, this rock is pretty heavy and I, you know, but if I got up to the upper part of it, I could probably hit that big old cactus really high and probably have many hundreds of these things fall down. And I, and then I win because my brother, you know, he was winning. And uh, so I, so I kind of crunch, crunched my way up there above it and in fact, here, let me pop this thing out. I'll, I'll have to stand up. And so I'm up on here on the side, and uh, we were, I'm up there and I'm looking down at this thing, and, and the bottom of the cactus is kind of right there. And I'm looking up at the top, and I'm going to try to hit it as high as I can because I want that big rock to hit that thing and see how many of those little pods we can knock down. And so I grabbed the thing. I'm now nah, it's too heavy to just throw like a baseball. And so I shot put, nah, maybe a discus, you know, just, you know, you know, just throw it in there. Let me turn this thing over. Throw it in there like a discus and hit and see how many pods, because I wanted to win. Gary was probably 20, 30 pods ahead of me already. And so I'm up there and I'm trying to find footing, like I'm crunching through on this thing, and then, then you have to kind of find the same hole to pull your foot back out because you couldn't because could, the crust of the, uh, the sand would hold your foot down so I'm up there like this and I, so I go and of course I'm not I'm not totally dumb you know Gary's standing down below me there and I'm up here and I'm going if I miss the cactus duck or run but I said don't missing me the count, you know, so I'm up there, turn my back to it, oh, like this, and I just threw that thing up, and I heard a thud, and I hit that thing dead on, just as it brushed through some of the branches, and the <laughs> pods started falling, but one of the trouble is, when it went around, I lost my footing, and I slid right down into the base of this big old mat, mattress of pots, all the needles and stuff. Now, I was out pretty quick on my reflexes because I was, at first I was going down and I go, I don't want to get all these needles in my hands because I'm going to need the, my hands to pull the needles out. So I rolled my hand up like this and I fell on my shoulder, just poof, down into it like this. Well, then I kind of look up and I see all these hundreds of pods coming down at me. <laughs> and I go, oh, like this, and I cover my face like this. And they went, 
and they're, just, they're sticking at all these needles, you know, they're, you know, like that. They're just poking down on me. And I go, I'm going, oh, ouch. Well, it's probably not what it said, but, <laughs> but um, you know, I'm, I'm down there, and, I'm, and then when they, they, and they kept just kind of dropping on me, you know, they, these ones would kind of, they'd kind of hang there and drop, but they kept falling. I couldn't move because I was sewn together. <laughs> I had these pods, and so they would stick like this, and I couldn't open it because the pods were stitched to me together here, and my hand was kind of stuck to my head here, and I couldn't, they were stuck here, I couldn't bend, bend my elbow, and I couldn't pick my arm up, and they were, on, they were stuck on the top here, and my legs, and I go, Gary, get me out of this thing. He go, he, so he, he's trying to get up the hill around the back side. At least I didn't hit him with the big rock. And, uh, so he comes around and he goes, well, what am I supposed to grab a hold of? You're <laughs> covered up all these odds. And I go, well, you, you'll find something. Get me out of there. Keep falling. You know, so, so he finally, he, of course, he had to kind of get keep scuffing these things away, kind of keep pushing the sand over to, to make a path so he get up and he finally got hold of my belt. He just kind of grabbed me. This is going to hurt. And I go, it already hurts. And he grabs me, pulls me back out. And you know, I'm, I'm, laying, I'm laying on my side because I've ripped some of the pods off and pushed some others in deeper. And, and he goes, well, what do I do? And I go, well, he's I better go get mom and dad. And I go, no, don't tell them. <laughs> you know, because I didn't want to get in trouble, too. But uh, then he, and he goes, well, there's none of them on your bottom, so maybe I'll set you up. So he rolled me up, so at least I wasn't laying, him, laying on him. So he rolled me up. Well, then I had to, I had to hold myself there because it was a steep bank. And so I finally just went, oh, I really got one arm down, you know, and I kind of held myself. And, my brother found a couple of pieces of sandstone. He's trying to try to pull the pods off. Well, that didn't work. So he said, I'm going to go get that. So, and he's coming over the top. And well, don't forget where I'm at, you know. So he, he goes over the top and he held, he said, if Bill is coming, that's the person we're waiting for, the reason we were delayed. And um, so Bill rolled up and Gary runs back and Bruce's in her here, you know. You know, somebody <laughs> trying to get up the hill on the other side you know, in a hurry. And uh, my dad comes up, and then Bill comes up. But my mom planned ahead. She brought tweezers. And uh, she gets up there, and my dad looks at that and goes, those tweezers aren't going to do anything. And so he says, let's go and get pliers. So they, <laughs> Bill and, then, and uh, my dad, Ran over down the hill again and crossed the freeway to the car, and I'm sitting there, you know, trying to balance myself. So, you know, not trying to move, because every time you move, it either drive him in, you know, pull one out, but poke another one in deeper. And I'm like, oh, man. This is, you know. And of course, every one of these things had a little bit of poison on them, so they're, they're burning as they're in. Well, they, they get up there, they get, well, my mom, she was over there, and she pretty quickly that she'd go up there trying to get a hold of one of them and then she'd poke herself and she was ouch and ouch you know and, and I go well, just just you know with sweep you know so my my dad and Bill get back up there with their hired needle those pliers is one of them they have and they started pulling these things out and we realized the sun now is now going down the desert it's cold fast and dark so they figure, well, better just get his what uh, <coughs> this shoe was pretty good, but this shoe was full of needles. So they pulled my shoe off and my sock off after pulling the pods off and pull all the needles out, put my sock back on, put my shoe back on, and then we went back. So I could walk. So they kind of got me up and they pulled some of the big pods off so I could move my arms so they could walk me down there because it's getting dark. So I was, I was a shy little kid. And, but, so I didn't feel, you know, very good, you know, that they put me in the headlight of the car, took my pants, cut my shirt off, took my pants off, and they're pulling needles out of me. 
and I'm there, and the cars, it, it's out, that's before cell phones, the cars would, you know, they'd help you if you're broken down, the cars would come up like this, and it seems two adult men standing on each side of this little half-naked kid, and they would speed off, I don't know what they thought, but anyway, they were pulling out, but they finally got them all out, and I kept thinking, you know, I didn't do anything wrong, I'm just having fun with God's nature, why God punish me with this, you know, I mean, I had needles festering out of me for months after that, you know, they'd, they'd start coming to the surface and, you know, make little blister marks, and, but you know what, sometimes just bad things happen to good people, and I considered myself good, I tried to be good, you know, choice between some, doing something good and something bad, I'd usually do nothing, so, but, you know, that's the way it is, sometimes just bad things happen, even, even when we're having a good time. So, I, so, but remember, God is always with you. Every cent, even when I fell down, He is with you. Amen. So, I just want to say the moral of the story is if you mess with the bull, you get the horns. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the pods, yes. <laughs> so, anyway, but God is good. He's always with us. This part is for <laughs> Dear Jesus, I want to thank you for even taking care of me that day and not having any lasting infections or anything like that or anything that went really long term. Thank you for the love that you show us each and every day in our lives. Whether or not we feel that love, help us all to know that you are always there. For Jesus' sake, amen. Amen. amen.